Welcome back, gents. Today, we're testing Lever Revolution Powder with 77 grain Sierra Match Kings and also 75 grain Spear Total Metal Jackets. I've actually been having some decent luck with the 55 grains, but I want to see how well the heavier ones do. And also, I want to see how well they do with some pretty hefty loads. We're talking, well, those of you who are in the know and like some other gun tuber channels, probably recognize where I got this load development from. I'm not going to say, but if you know, you know. And if you don't, well, be very careful with this, because this can get kind of spicy. This is not published data. This was developed by someone else being a little bit crazy. And I'm taking it, I'm seeing how well it does in my platform. And then I'm going to test the spear bullets in that platform. Also, I have some extra loaded up here. And we're going to chronograph them. That said, let's talk about my platform. 20 inch stainless steel shill and barrel. So that's something that's button rifled, hand lapped, air gauged. So it's a match quality rifle. We have a Swamp Fox 30 times scope up there with the 56 millimeter objective lens. It is first focal plane. A Veltor upper with a New Frontier Armory billet lower. Timney trigger with a three pound pull and a rifle length buffer tube system going on there. So that's a BCM Mark II. Amend grip, amend two, I meant to say, grip and amend two stock and just a standard bolt carrier group. Although the bolt is matched for headspace with the barrel. That's one of the things that kind of came with it. Paid a little bit of a premium, but it's all good. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but it must not be too important. Anyway, 100 yards using the front and back rest here. I just have to get set up. But first, I'm going to do the velocity reading, so stand by. Okay, so let's do a quick primer examination. So there is the ones with the Sierra Match King. These are what I used as a maximum charge. You can tell the primers look a little bit flattened. Still a little bit round, a little bit flattened. And over here, they don't look quite as round, but notice near the bottom of the rim, closest to the table there, but also this one. This is something I want to point out about, about this rifle. That's like almost a type of ejector smear. And when you see that on this rifle, and possibly yours, that's how you know you're a little bit over pressure. You're probably going to want to back it off. So definitely what was used as the maximum charge basically is the maximum charge. That said, let's go take a look at the velocities. They're a little bit scary. Stand by. Okay, so this is the max charge with the Sierra Match Kings. So let's go take a look at, well, the average first. 2862, whoa. Extreme spread, 97, yikes. Standard deviation, 46, which I'll go ahead and I'll do my little plug about standard deviations. Doing such a small sample size with standard deviations will give you an idea, but really it's not the former function of a standard deviation. You generally need a population or a sample size of like 20 because think of it like a bell curve. It's really trying to figure out a certain range from the average. So from five is kind of silly actually, but whatever. It's kind of like neck tension and saying uh, 2000s or something like that. It's something that people within this realm, within this sport understand. So we just go with it. Anyway, let's take a look what we got. Uh, this was the last shot, so almost 2,900, yikes. This one was just over 2,900. Shot number three, pretty high up there. Shot number two was pretty low. And shot number one, by the way, so this would be the equivalent of a cold bore shot. Uh, it was actually pretty low. So max charge, definitely one we kind of want to stay away from with this bullet. But let's change string. This is the... Total metal jacket, so spear total metal jacket, again, max charge. It's like 25.6 grains of a lever revolution. Let's take a look. First, let's do the average. 28.47, still really high. Extreme spread, 19. Standard deviation, 8. So anytime you're under 10, you're doing pretty good. But again, remember my little spiel from earlier. Anyway, so let's take a look. 2842, 2855, 2855, 2849, 2836. Oh, that's pretty good. So I feel a lot more safe 
kind of in a way with the Total Metal Jackets, although those are the ones that showed the most wear and tear on the brass. So definitely this is this is pretty this is pretty high. This is something we want to stay away from a little bit. Anyway, let's see how well we group with our powder workup. Quick overview of my notes. For the Sierra Match Kings, the overall length is 2.247. For the Total Metal Jackets, the overall length is 2.230. Why did I select that? Because for the rest of Spears load data, because remember, for Lever Revolution, they do not have load data. This is all extrapolated. In fact, actually, I stole this from someone else. And if you know, you know. But anyway, so I kept it consistent with Spears' other load data. That's the only reason why. And one last note, my Rueg primers, which I have a great surplus of still. So there are some differences there. Because I want to see how well it did. And not bad. Let's go over the Sierra Match Kings first. Like, they are generally... A little over an inch. This one is pretty much an inch. Minimum charge, vertical stringing, about, eh, let's say two inches, probably a little bit under. Things shift downward, maybe a little bit to the right for point to impact, but here we go. Nothing really to write home about. The third charge, 25 grains. This is where things start to look a lot better, pretty close to my actual point to aim. It's still probably just under an inch, but we'll say it's an inch group. Horizontal stringing though, from vertical stringing. Things blow up here, but we're still going down. That's good for a number of reasons though. Then our final charge, which is only three shots, is right here, one, two, three. Found it very interesting that it went back to vertical stringing. The spears did not do very well at all. Give me one second while I get resituated. So one, two, three, four, vertical stringing. Interesting how it kind of mirrors that. But yeah, that's, that's terrible. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is only a three shot group. This is the only acceptable group I got with this load development. I do like how it kind of is staying on a similar plane, but yeah, that's bad. And then the final charge, things are definitely dipping down because we have our core, core group here and then right there. So I'm almost wondering though, if maybe I could go in between the two, maybe 25.4 or five, Maybe things might even out, but honestly, I still wouldn't trust that because this group before it, vertical stringing and it's pretty grotesque. This one's shooting ones out down below. Honestly, if this one was a four shot group, who knows where that extra shot would have went. It just looks good because there's less shots on paper. That's part of the reason why sample size is important. No more word on that. Anyway, so why oh why? Okay, now let's return to the question of why it's a good thing that the point to impact's going down as we work up in charge. One, since this is going down over such a large powder range, that means we have predictability. But two, once we know the speed of all these and we can develop a dope, and also once we actually get out and get familiar with our dope, we can predict our dispersion. Or in other words, if we can obtain a type of positive compensation uh, that is to say, if a slower bullet goes higher and a faster bullet goes lower, is there going to be a convergence point? And furthermore, if there is a conversion po convergence point, what distance is going to be that convergence point? Is it going to be 600 yards? Is it going to be 500 yards? You can plan for that, but you have to know your dope. 